Laura Jean is all about inspiring and empowering women. And so in 2017, we wanted to kick off this series. It's called the Inspired Women Series. And we just wanted to get together a collection of really incredible women to share their stories because we can all use some inspiration and 2017 is our year of belief. And so I asked Sophie to join us today because she's definitely inspired me um, and touched my life. And um, I'm so excited for you to be here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. It's an honor. So um, Sophie, as um, a lot of you guys know, she's a founder of a really incredible, an incredibly successful dance studio in LA now with multiple locations. So one of the things that I love about her um, and her studio is that she's all about inspiring kids to be themselves and to express themselves um, in a very non-competitive, non-threatening environment and really embracing their, their individual personalities, which is it's so needed and incredible. Um, celebrity stars entrust their babies with her, like Heidi Klum and Beyonce. Um, and, you know, in addition to that, while building her empire and nurturing all of these children, um, she struggled with uh, fertility herself. And so she went through different fertility treatments and then an open adoption with her first daughter and some big surprises along the way. So um, I just find her story to be super inspiring. And so we're just going to um, have a little chat. Thank, thank you. Hi, thank you. <laughs> um, so if you could describe yourself in one sentence, what would that be? Okay, I am a wife, <laughs> mother, Sophie Dance Studio owner, friend, daughter, and sister, and I am indomitable and hugely vulnerable. I love that. That's amazing. One of the things that we're talking about is just women's vulnerabilities. I think that's something that's really important um, to acknowledge, so thank you. Mm -hmm. What's your unique gift to the world? I think I've learned how to create safe spaces for children and totally. and friends and family and safe spaces in my home and in the dance studio. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this talk is titled "Your Bring Your Dreams Are Bigger Than You." Um, what does that mean to you? Well, I think it's been an important lesson to learn how to greet life on life's terms and to be prepared for the unexpected. And um, when I first opened my studio, I had a very small, tangible dream um, of, yeah, running this dance studio and being the only teacher and being closed for the summers and being open and, you know, for a few hours every day. And it was this really tiny, manageable thing. And um, it grew and grew and started to take on a life of its own as the kids became uh, more into it and we had more students it just I felt like she got her own personality and grew and took over and um, I ran the studio in a 24-7 way for the first four years and really realized that if if I was going to be able to continue doing what I was doing that there needed to be a shift that there was no way I was going to be able to continue on doing the 24-7 uh, studio owning business operating out of fear um, afraid that if I made the wrong move it was going to collapse and my life was going to unfold like a scary Tim Burton scene um, <laughs> and that was kind of four years into it and I realized that I had to figure out how to let go of some things and how to not be afraid that if I made a choice that it, and it came all crumbling down that it was still going to be okay mm -hmm. and in learning how to let go of it it actually started to really breathe on its own and it just got bigger and and bigger um, and that's been a beautiful lesson and it's always a hard thing for me to learn about letting go but um, that was that's really what's happened and now she's become far bigger than anything I anticipated and certainly in having multiple locations was not anything I set out to do um, but this has been a huge process and disconnecting from the end result and um, just having tremendous faith and letting things unfold and take their own course and that's really what's happened with the studio sometimes I sit back and I'm like, okay whatever you're gonna do over there and it just does its thing yeah um, and you just guide it along so that's amazing and shows your personal growth throughout that process as well I know I huge you know I know a lot of us struggle with making fear-based decisions how did you what kind of helped you past that of that you know you have to hold on because if I let go something's gonna come crashing down what what helped you kind of make that transition um, 
a couple of things. One would be therapy, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Having my therapist on speed dial was right. very effective. Um, and, um, and, and I think a couple of things. I think one, there was just no way I could continue on that path and find joy in what I was doing. I was gonna burn out really quickly and I was going to start to really dislike it, which is what kind of like started to happen a little bit. It just became a lot of teaching, a lot of accommodating other people, mm -hmm. and a lot of trying to make my studio something that other people wanted as opposed to something that I truly felt it was meant to be. Yeah. Um, so I kind of got to that place several years into it and, and needed to have that big shift. And then really um, wanting to become a mother and becoming a mother. And um, that piece of that story was, you know, it was many years spent having failed fertility treatments and um, wanting so bad. I mean, I planned out this pregnancy from how I was like going to share with my friends and what I'd be wearing that day. And like, you know, all, you know, really. And it wasn't exactly a plan, right? right? Yeah. I imagine it all, just it always does. Yeah. Um, and it was really eye-opening to see, especially because I dreamt of the dance studio from the time I was six years old. I wanted to be just like my dance teacher. She had four kids. She, you know, she was a mom. She ran the studio. She taught me dance until I was 18 years old. And I used to run an imaginary dance studio for most of my childhood out of my bedroom with so cute. attendance <laughs> records and choreography <laughs> notes. And, and I love that attendance I records shows. And I, I picked the costumes from my dance teacher's costume catalogs that she wasn't using for shows um, and um, yeah I and and so in manifesting that it seemed like okay and then I kind of made that happen and I sort of expected the same result with becoming a mom mm -hmm. I was like well of course I can make this happen right. and, um, and I really couldn't and um, I, it was July, it was actually my friend Carrie who's here, it was at her bachelorette party, it was July of 2010, right? And I was having a conversation with one of her friends, it was a really casual conversation about, um, about her and her brother, and this light bulb went off in me that like, I knew as well as I knew my own name that I was not gonna get pregnant, that this baby was coming to me and it was not coming through my own body. And, in that moment, I really surrendered to this idea of other possibilities and and the and opening up to the idea of adoption, and um, that whole process. I don't know. We can get into that after. But um, that whole process, it, it was a nine-month journey until Aurora was born. So I sometimes wonder if that was like when yeah. Aurora was conceived, when that light bulb went off. Yeah. Um, but. You know, that really didn't go according to plan. And prior to my adoption of Aurora, I was in an adoption of, I was trying to adopt um, 15 month old twins out of the foster care system who were severely neglected and abused as infants. Mm -hmm. And um, and that fell through, which was incredibly devastating. Yeah. And probably the most like tragic thing that had happened to me up until that point, is, aside from failed fertility treatments, this felt like, okay, I'm not getting pregnant, but I'm gonna make this like really like heroic choice. Mm -hmm. I adopt these kids, right? Um, right. right. And that, um, and so when that got taken away from me too, it just felt, I, I felt like I had truly failed, and. Um, Four days later, I met Aurora's birth mother. Aurora was born four weeks later. And suddenly I had this whole new perspective of how how these things were really supposed to work. And that this was, there was a lot of meant to be-ness. And for me, a lot of understanding my role in my story as the star and not the writer of this. Mm. And so, um, being able to become Aurora's mother allowed me to just have tremendous faith in things unfolding in a way that I can't predict them to. And so it was easier to let go of certain things of the studio and yeah. um, and I, I don't want to say care less, but um, not put so much of myself into things working out a certain way, really. Yeah, yeah. So. that's beautiful. And you talked about like, the failure and the mourning of those moments, you know, when you decided that it wasn't going to come from your body and, um, you know, and then the, the failed adoption as well. Like, what do you think? Like, that's something that I, I know a lot of us struggle with is like, you know, how, how much do you let yourself feel that failure and that mourning? And, you know, how did that, how did that manifest for you? How did that go? 
you know, I was thinking today like about failed, they call it like, you know, failed adoption when it's somewhere or failed or failed IVF um, right. because uh, my, for my second daughter, my husband and I attempted IVF and our first IVF failed, but failed is such a terrible know, thing to it? say <laughs> because it's really not failing. It's really like not meant to be because there's somebody else and now we have a 19 month old um, Coraline who was, um, you know, who was the meant to be one yes. and it just took a little, it just, it, it's all about timing, yeah. I think, with so many things. And so, um, you know, I think you grieve the loss of disappointment, but it's really important to always stay centered in um, the universe conspiring for your greater self yeah. and, um, and knowing that things are supposed to work out in a certain way that um, are not your plan. Yeah. And, um, when I, um, I also now have a four month old because we, surprise, surprise, <laughs> surprise. got pregnant um, when Coraline was eight months old. Um, and people would, people say to me a lot, like when I say, oh, she was a surprise, you know, and they say like, oh, that wasn't the plan. I'm like, well, it was the plan. It wasn't my plan. Right, but it right. certainly was the plan. <laughs> I just didn't know about it. And so um, <laughs> trying to, to be open to all of that is, yeah. Is, is really important and you know and honor the challenge of loss in any way right. but it doesn't need to um, you know deter you right um, I feel like you know we I know you sort of mentioned like blockades with or challenges that you're up against mm -hmm. when opening the studio I think I've never seen cha challenges as blockades I've always mm -hmm. seen them as an opportunity to try a different tactic mm -hmm. or um, I've my parents always said I could never take no for an answer. That's like my big <laughs> thing, right? And and I think like I can't take no for an answer, and that's you know served me well. And yeah. sometimes it's hard, but you you have to find um, you have to try different tactics and not yeah. really see blockades as okay. Well, I'm not going to do that anymore and just give up and I'll find something else. It's just it's just you know you just need a round of yeah. yeah. that flexibility oh, yeah. Yeah. to adjust. Yeah. All of them. Um, what has been your biggest setback? And how did you overcome that? Um, well, it could be with the studio or it could be, you know, whatever that means to you. Yeah, I mean, I guess like I said, I've always seen challenges as more like invitations to try a different way or, you know, to try those challenges a different way. Um, you know, on a superficial level, trying to get a dance studio open when I was not even 25 and, um, I had no money. I had a, a small loan from a deal for dear friend, and you know, trying to get somebody to lease the space to me. Um, you know, nobody wanted to lease to me. I had no money, and <laughs> I just had this great idea that I, I had faith would work. Right. Um, and you know, no one wanted to insure me. That's for sure. So, you, I face those challenges, but you keep, I, I, you keep at it, and you find the right people, and you find a different strategy, and you find somebody, and you find a way in. And yeah. somebody who's willing to work with you on getting your way in yeah um, and that divine timing so, again right of like everything lining up with the right partners and everything coming together it is it's a yeah. timing thing and um, we have a really good friend Karen who has skin like I don't even know what's up with her skin she has the <laughs> softest skin you've ever it's felt all it's yeah. crazy and I'm like Karen what do you use and she said what? She said, well, it doesn't really matter what you use. She said, actually, I use like a really cheap, crappy product, but it's all about the timing of when you use it. Oh. And I've always found that to be such a <laughs> metaphor for things because it is about the timing. The timing yeah. is so important and it's easy to forget that because of course we want things done on our terms and at our timeline. And it's so hard to just to surrender to how things unfold. Yeah. But um, I think it's, it's key to, and of course, any, big mistakes that I've made along the way, be it my uh, relationships, my studio, uh, problems with my my children, it's always been when I've tried to make things go a certain way. Mm -hmm. And when I can detach myself from the outcome and be really present is um, is when I don't see those yeah. those uh, mistakes. So, I love that. yeah. Yeah. Um, when it rains, it pours, and sometimes in good ways and sometimes in negative ways. Talk me through what you do in those kind of overwhelming moments to get through that. Well, right now, um, three kids under the age of five and two studio locations is really, um, it, it can be really overwhelming. We definitely have some really overwhelming moments um, with them, but I think 
sometimes when I'm like really what I call like in the weeds with it, I you have to stop and think about like your it's all of your and your perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So if I can find the joy in it or, you know, the kids to be really silly and um, and be be in that moment of finding the humor in it, the laughter in it, try to compartmentalize, even saying out loud to myself, this is fucking crazy, <laughs> um, you know? And of course, being able to rely on my husband and family and friends is huge. Um, but I think it's all about your perspective because you can say, you know, this is really overwhelming and crazy. And, so, and sometimes I'll fall into that right. trap for sure. And like, uh, you know, and but, um, you also can have the choice to think about things a little bit differently and you know what this is really silly and fun and in five years my life is not going to be like this and so this is all okay and, yeah. um, and sometimes I ask myself like well what else? if I wasn't doing this in this moment what else would I be doing and would I rather be doing this and probably so you know <laughs> I love that just okay. kind of like that perspective yeah yeah um who and or what inspires you um my inspire me <laughs> my um, my husband inspires me to be <laughs> the best wife and mother and business owner I can be mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm really inspired by perseverance mm -hmm. and resilience um, people with a lot of energy and people that don't give up um, and I'm really inspired by people who don't care what other people think. Mm. Um, and I don't mean in like a, they do bad things and like don't care, you know what I mean? Um, but people who are willing to say what everybody else is thinking. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes with the business I'm in, working with children and working with parents, I'm not always in a position to really say what I'm thinking. It's just not, it's not like the politically correct way to run my business. Right. So I, I do tend to be like the damage control element of our dance studio and, and, and have to be fairly reserved something. So I always really admire those people that can just say what they mean. And I just find inspiration in that, even if they're in moments when I really can't be saying what I want totally. to be saying. So. Love those people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love those people. Wear what they want to wear. You know, the whole thing. It's yeah. just, I, I'm always so enamored by, you know, that type of person. Yeah. So I think my five-year-old is going to be that type of person. So. <laughs> I think she might already. Be. She already is that type of person. And yeah. So. And I, was, I, I just want to be a little more like that, a little less care what you think. So. That's amazing. A little less afraid of consequences. Mm, you know, I love like that. that so. Yeah. Um, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Mm. Um, probably to follow your heart and success will follow you. And success in whatever that means to you. I know for some people that may be financial success, for some people that may be family or partnership, um, or having your business. But I think when you are truly in your passion and in your bliss, um, it's really easy for success to follow. And when you're in conflict with that or unclear about that, then it's harder. So I think that that was really great advice. And a friend once told me when I first opened my studio, he came in and he said, he kind of looked around and he said, um, just so you know, people are going to walk through these doors because this is very attractive, but people are going to walk through these doors that aren't supposed to be here and that's going to be okay. And, um, and that was like, I was like, what do you mean? I hope whenever, I hope people, I hope every kid that walks this door stays and dances here for 10 years, you know, um, or until they graduate. But it was a really important piece of advice and it's, um, it stayed with me because I even find that in my own life, you know, as, as you enter motherhood and you're making new friends all of a sudden and other moms, you kind of wonder what's gonna stick and it's important to understand people are gonna pass through your life and people are gonna pass through the studio that aren't meant to be there and that's, and that's okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. always been my helpful advice. What's the best piece of advice that you received but didn't follow? Um, well, I think I'm always trying to figure out my priorities, especially in being a mom and of course my children and my family being my priority over business and um, and at the same time honoring my business and my responsibilities there. So, you know, it's always about prioritizing and I think, um, you know, I was told to like check your email once a day, and I think that's probably really good advice that I don't follow. So I should <laughs> probably, you know, I'd love to follow that advice. And I, I mean, I think that comes with like 
being able to prioritize and delegate. Yeah. Um, and I'm terrible at delegating unless it's my husband. I don't like telling people what to do, except for my husband and my children, so, right? Other than that, I'm really, like I've never actually fired anybody, though I've, though a lot of people have come into the studio and no longer work there, but I always like convince them that this is like not the right place for them, and, and like maybe they should be doing something else, and maybe, and then like they leave, and it's, I have a, I fired them, but I've never actually like, told somebody like this is it. Right. So um, I need to get better at those things for sure. Um, and own a good business and yeah, check my email way less. I like it. So. <laughs> what motivates you and keeps you going toward your goals? Well, my I, I want to say my family. That would be like my but but that is not true, which I know because I was motivated before mm. I had my family. Mm. So I think um, what motivates me in the studio is definitely the joy that I see on the kids, um, especially our year. We have a year at recital, and that is always like my big birth moment. Of um, I'll kind of we'll kind of get to the recital, and I'm like, okay, this is definitely my last year of doing this, and I'm definitely going to close or sell this business because there's no way I could do this again. <laughs> and then there recital happens and there's so much joy and so much magic and the kids are just you know the older kids are just in their moment and in their shining moment of performing better than they ever have in the studio and the little ones are just hysterical with their unpredictability of how they're going to respond to a giant audience looking at them and um and that joy that i see across is what i think allows me to make the next schedule and do it again for sure yeah, it's really motivating. <laughs> What's the biggest risk you've ever taken? And what did you learn from that? In the business, mm -hmm. in the business, um, it was opening our second location. Mm -hmm. And that was really, you know, you never know in your business if you, how important you are as, mm -hmm. and, and I knew that if I was gonna open a second location, I wasn't gonna be able to be there all the time and be as present. And so it's a scary thing to remove yourself from the equation of your dream and see if it can be replicated without you. Um, so it was scary and also really liberating because mm -hmm. the more I saw that this, this thing could actually breathe without me, the more it, it gave me, uh, you know, I can, I can be with my children and focus on my children yeah. and I can be with my friends and focus on my friends. And there's always something at the studio, but you know, I also know that, um, that it could be its own thing and, and being able to replicate it. And, yeah. And it's been pretty cool. And like another yeah. layer of that letting go that you talked about earlier and, totally. and overcoming that fear and all of those kinds of things, which I'm sure is also challenging because you know, not only have you poured your heart and soul into it, but it's your name, right? On on the door, it's your it it's is. your baby. It is, and yeah, and you have to let go of some of those things as yeah. your business grows. You do, and it's um, we had a birthday party in there this Saturday, and I or this Sunday, and I was a guest at the birthday party, and there were you know 50 people, and everything was getting trashed, and someone said like, <laughs> "Is this so hard for you to be here? Does this feel like you're in your home and people are trashing it?" And I said it probably would have been a few years ago, but now like it's okay. I know it'll get cleaned up and. You know, I just, you, yeah, I probably five years ago, I would have been like, what are these people doing? <laughs> but, um, you know, you know, it's like, no, we were on Those to the days. next and it'll move on and anything that breaks can be re replaced and it's these awesome. things just, they, these things matter less. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. That's amazing. What's the biggest mistake you've ever made? Um, I don't know if there's one, like, huge mistake mm -hmm. I just know mistakes that I'm the mistakes that I make are always when I am trying to uh, make things go a certain way mm -hmm. it's really back to that like trying to fit in into a structure into a plan yeah versus yeah being flexible and yeah and 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 guiding things but being detached from the outcome mm -hmm. you know it's like spinning the spinning top that's that's sort of our job is to spin it and then you just kind of wait and see and yeah. enjoying the excitement of where it lands but yeah. um, I think yeah when I've run into issues um, or things have you know there's been real problems or real stresses I find that when I'm really stressed out about something I have to ask myself that question how did how um, attached to the outcome of this am I and if I have a real attachment to the outcome then 
it's a stressful situation. Yeah. And when I can say, okay, you know what, I'm going to move forward with this as best I can, and, and whatever happens, happens, it's just a much easier way to go through life yeah. and, and owning a business. Really. Yeah. That passionate but detached, it's a tough, right? Yeah. Like, that's a tough combination yeah. To, yeah. to find that balance. It is, and that's like with motherhood too, you know, or, or yeah. being a parent. Yeah. It's like you do, you have all this passion, and yet, you know, you can't control these little, little beings. So, <laughs> figuring out the balance of being detached and being sort of the guardians of them, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. And yeah. it's, it's a big, you know, it's an ongoing lesson and journey, yeah. I think. That's beautiful. How do you celebrate your accomplishments? I love to celebrate. <laughs> um, you know, I think it's really important to celebrate. I really, I really encourage everybody to celebrate. And I, you know, whether it, and I always celebrate in community with, I love to celebrate with friends. Um, and, you know, little things like, you know, it's if it's dinner or something, to make something special about, you know, any little thing my kids do. I think that's really important. And one thing I thought about recently, because I tend to go a little over the top with birthday parties, <laughs> and I know my husband isn't crazy about some of my choices. Um, but and so I started to think about, like, why do I, you know, why do I do go so, why do I go so, you know, overboard with these things? But I think I realized in thinking about that, that, I have used their birthday parties as ways of celebrating sort of milestones that we've gone through during the year. Yeah. And somehow these parties feel more about us as a family and celebrating yeah. like the last year or what's coming forward that it just feels, you know, because I never approach a birthday party like, well, it's just that. So I think I find those moments to celebrate all of our yeah. family and our friends. Um, and yeah, that's fun. That's kind of. <laughs> But yeah, I think it's important to recognize small accomplishments and big accomplishments. And they matter, you know, like mm -hmm. life is short sometimes. And I think that's a, an important thing to find time for. Totally. It's easy to forget sometimes, like where you're just moving on, especially when you're like a de determined, driven person. And you're like, on to the next, on to the next. Yeah. But finding, I love that like family celebration idea. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Um, what do you believe? <laughs> I believe, I believe, um, I believe in second chances, I really do, probably even more chances. I believe in tolerance and I believe in kindness, As those are things that I would hope to pass on to my children, um, yeah, I think, um, I think there's something to be said about an ability to give another person um, a second chance, another another attempt at something, a second mm -hmm. chance. Um, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. What's the happiest you've ever been, and what was the source of that happiness? Well, I don't. I don't know that. Like, I mean, I like to think that maybe I haven't been like my happiest yet, but <laughs> I haven't had that moment. But I mean, there's. You know, I have three beautiful, really adorable children, mm -hmm. and I own a studio with 700 children, and many of them in tutus at all times. And it's a really happy space. Yeah. Um, it's a real. There's a lot of opportunity for like cuteness and laughter and joy, and I'm so grateful for that. And that doesn't go unnoticed on me that I see that there's an opportunity for happiness in my home. Um, every day yes. and I especially see it when other people enter our home you know and there's so much cuteness in here you know I mean there, there is and I, I, try, I try not to uh, take any of that for granted yeah. so um, there's a lot of happy moments and you know cherishing them and the happy moments in the studio I there's a lot of opportunity for laughter that's amazing and that you know that just goes to show the the space the safe space you were talking about earlier and really kind of like bringing these personalities out and letting them shine That's yeah amazing. yeah um okay finish the sentence oh, <laughs> <laughs> women are um vast complex miracles i love that it's beautiful i have plate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> I will create safe spaces. Mm. I'm thankful for uh, 
um, my dad. Mm -hmm. right now. My dad has really been there for me and my family in a way I've just never seen him before recently. And he is just, yeah, he's there for me every day in every way without a fail or a need for anything back. And I'm just, I'm so grateful for him right now. I don't, I don't know in this moment what I do without him. It's <laughs> awesome. Life is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is, and it, yeah, you expect the unexpected. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wish, I wish, I wish um, for kindness and tolerance. I wish people wouldn't road rage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never real. I really, I really don't get the amount of stress and energy that's gets put into road rage. <laughs> <laughs> A real problem. <laughs> Just imagine if they would like refocus that. So I mean, like, imagine. Like, what if? Yeah. Sometimes, when, like, if I kind of cut somebody off and they like give me the, you know, I just like smile. Yeah. They don't even <laughs> know what to do. I know. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. So I'm trying to get better at that too. Just like the real, because I drive a minivan now too, so it's kind of like, <laughs> like just feel sorry for me. And like, you don't need to get mad. I cut you off. Yeah. Um. Um. I am. Um, indomitable and and hugely vulnerable Amazing. at the same time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>